Welcome back to Fox and Friends, the prominent school board association who sent a letter to the White House describing parents protesting CRT and COVID rules as, quote, domestic terrorists, is now saying they're sorry. The National School Boards Association saying in a statement, quote, we regret and apologize for the letter. There was no justification for some of the language included. But is the damage already done? Here to discuss, Fox News contributor and former education secretary under President Reagan, Dr. Bill Bennett. Dr. Bennett, welcome. Rachel, hi. Nice to have you here. So tell me, what do you, what do you make of all this? Is this too little, too late? Have parents, you know, we waken up this sleeping giant and parents are now onto this whole indoctrination um, machine of gender ideology, um, CRT, and, and whatnot. Yeah, eyes are opened here, I think, Rachel. Uh, the letter is uh, late, uh, but uh, it's welcome anyway. But uh, the damage has been done. What we find out here is that these uh, this National School Board Association, like the PTA, like the National Council of Social Studies, are in bed with the government, with a liberal government, uh, and they seek control over uh, the authority and authority over your children. Uh, but parents are waking up. You know, COVID uh, was a terrible thing, uh, and we had to put masks on, but we did. it did have the effect of taking some blinders off mm -hmm. as people saw what was going on in the classroom, and a lot of parents did. Uh, you know, over the years, we have tended to yield, Rachel, to experts, expertise. You know, the doctor said, the school said, the Internet said. Uh, instead of yielding to our own sense of things, our own common sense and our own experience, I think that revelation is now taking place across the country. And people are saying, what's going on? We have authority over our children. We are the first line of defense for our children. We speak for our children. Uh, not all teachers are parents, but all parents are teachers and the child's first and indispensable teacher. That's right, the first and most important teacher. And I know a lot of parents, I talk to moms and dads across the country, they, a lot of them are saying, I'm done co-parenting with the government. I'm in charge. And that's what we're seeing happening. Right. Here's an incident that I think really um, speaks to this. And it, it's a very sad in incident. It actually it hits very close to home because it involves a child with Down syndrome. And as you know, Dr. Bennett, I have a child with special needs with Down syndrome. This was a man named Jeffrey right. Steele. He's upset because the school actually tied a mask to his daughter's face, which had, this would be a very, could be, have been a very serious medical incident for his daughter who is nonverbal, um, has an enlarged tongue and, and, and could possibly have not been able to breathe. I want you to listen to this clip and tell me what you think on the other side. When she stepped off the bus with the mask and with the mask tied on. I, when I met with the school teacher on the 12th um, of October with a, a service officer, a police officer who's at the school, um, I, I, I was asking about the mask and asked why we weren't informed, why they thought that it was okay and safe to tie that on a nonverbal child with a, uh, with an IEP, with a disability, and, and Sophia has an right. enlarged tongue right. as a result of her Down syndrome. But when she stepped off the bus, it's important for everyone to know, too, that my wife found her um, with the mask that was saturated with her saliva, yeah. which is a natural result of some breathing issues. I mean, she could have seizured anything uh, could have happened. Dr. Bennett, your thoughts? Yeah, well, uh, this father is to be congratulated. Uh, mm -hmm. He's alert, he's paying attention. But in a lot of circumstances, we can see that if parents surrender their authority to the schools or anyone else, that authority will be picked up. And now it's being picked up by the government. And we see this arrogance of government saying, we know best, we know best about how to take care of your children. Uh, and if we think we're, we need to tie a tight mask around this nonverbal child, we will do so. Uh, so this is a, an awakening that's going on, and that's a good thing. It's a long time coming, but I'm glad it's occurred. Uh, otherwise, the machinery of the state just keeps rolling on. Right. You know, if we look at the books like 1984, Brave New World, The Hunger Games, you know, if you, if you sit back and let other people take over, um, they will take over. Uh, now we're seeing, I think, that awakening, and that's a very important thing. 
Absolutely, such wise words from you, Dr. Bennett. I wanna see less masks, more smiles um, for myself, from these children. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning, really appreciate it. I'm gonna read very quickly a statement from the Brevard Public Schools, because there was a little bit of misunderstanding. Some, the, the parent says, I had an IEP um, and a medical exemption, but the school says the student was given a medical mask exemption as soon as the mother made the request to school leadership. The school district is investigating and is in the process of gathering all the facts. Thank you, Dr. Bennett.